So we just finished talking about rollback records and how they're helpful to um, prevent unnecessary records from being created in Salesforce. And now what we need to do is actually kind of finish out this flow and collect the rest of the information needed by the junior sales team and by Pedro to make sure we are following up with customers. So I am going to drag another screen element to the canvas here, but I'm gonna rearrange these first so that I have a space to do that. And so screen one right now is connected to the create leads record. And instead I'm going to delete this connecting line and I'm just gonna drag another screen here to the canvas. And this will be the second screen where we collect the information about um, the contacts, uh, the questions they have about shipping for the shipping specialist, and then their preferred contact method, the best time to follow up with um, this customer, whoever they are. And then we're also gonna talk about the lookup element, the lookup input element over here in the flow canvas. So let's take it from the top. We'll put a call script here. We can call it call script four. And we'll just say, I think on the last screen, we just collected the company information. So I'll just say, great, thanks so much. And what questions? What questions do you have for our shipping specialist? And so um, this will allow the junior sales team to collect those questions. Once again, we'll click fields and we'll uh, select the record variable that we're working with, which is the lead record variable. And I don't think we actually made like a long text area or anything like that with the questions. But I know for sure that the lead comes with this description field, which you can see right here. So I'll just drag the description here and that will allow our uh, junior sales team to enter their questions. And then I'll just click um, the back button on that description field so that we go back to the screen properties. I'm, I'm realizing I didn't actually configure the screen. So we'll just call this screen two because it will be two in the order of the flow. I will hide the header and then I'm gonna hide the pause button. I think it's fine if we leave the previous button on there. You know, they might need to go back and update the phone or the email or something, so that's fine. Um, but now we have our, our questions and I guess we need to collect the preferred contact method, the best time to follow up, and then we need to potentially assign you know, this lead that we're creating to a specific user inside of Salesforce. So let's drag another call script here. I forget what call script we're on. I'm just gonna call this five, call script five, and I'll say, uh, thank you. What's the, the best way to reach you and when would you like our team to follow up? And we'll go back to our fields and then we can drag the preferred contact method field, which we created in the pre-work to the canvas. And then we can also drag um, the follow-up date to the canvas. And so this will allow the junior sales team to say, oh, it, you know, it's, he wants to be contacted by email or she prefers a text message and here's the date and time. I guess the date and time is mostly res relevant for like a phone call, but either way, it'll be there. And then um, we need to allow the junior sales rep to assign this record to maybe a specific uh, shipping specialist. So I'm gonna press done and I will just connect screen one to screen two and then screen two to the create lead records. I tend to save my screens pretty frequently as I go throughout the flow. And the reason I do that is because if you drag a bunch of elements to the screen, but you don't configure it um, or press done and save it, then when you X out, you lose all your work. And so that's annoying. So <laughs> I tend to save screens a little bit more frequently than other flows. But we have uh, the needed information here now. And so I want to um, give the junior sales rep the option to assign this to a specific uh, shipping specialist. And so to communicate that to the junior sales rep, I'm gonna scroll down here and pull a display text element to the canvas. And I'll just call this a display text one. And then uh, I'll set the font to 16. And maybe I'll just like put some square brackets here or I'm gonna make it bold. I'll put square brackets. And I'll be like internal use only. And this kind of lets the 
or I guess the reason I'm trying to use the display text instead of the call script is that I don't want the junior sales rep to be confused and think that he needs to read or she needs to read this to the customer. So, you know, this display text element is a way for them to visually differentiate like, oh, okay, these ones with the quotes are things I should be saying out loud. And these ones that just say internal use only, uh, you know, I don't need to read that to the customer. Um, and so I'll just say internal use only. Oops. Please select a shipping specialist using the um, field below. I was trying to think of the right word there. I just settled on field. And that's perfect because now what we can do is we can drag a lookup element to our screen flow. And so the lookup element is confusing for a lot of people. It's confusing to me um, because it doesn't always work the way you think it should. It's kind of counterintuitive the way it works. So let's drag this lookup element to the screen. And what this lookup element does is allows you to have like a search box inside the screen flow where you can type in fields the way you might in an actual lookup element inside Salesforce. And then you can have um, the screen flow actually return a list of results so that the end user can you know, pick one from the list. And so when we are configuring this element, uh, you have to give it an API name. So we'll just call it a lookup element. And then uh, we have to define the name of a lookup field on the source object. And this is where things you know, get really confusing for a lot of people. So let's cut through the confusion and just make this really simple. The lookup element emulates an existing lookup relationship inside of Salesforce and then uses that to just show the records you're looking for. And so what does that mean? If you are looking, say, for contact records, or maybe account records would be a better uh, example, then what you can do is you can use the um, account ID field and reference the contact record. And then what this lookup element will do is allow you to look up accounts inside Salesforce. And so you might be thinking like, why are we using the account element? What, what does it matter about this contact field? And the only thing that you need to remember is that you need to find an existing relationship inside of Salesforce to look up to the object that you're working with. So in this case, we're looking up to the user object. And there's a ton of fields in Salesforce that use that user record. Some of them are like the created, um, the created by user in an actual uh, record. And so any field that you can click through and is like a lookup relationship, you can leverage and just copy that lookup relationship into this lookup element. And so if you need to look up accounts, you can use the contact object, which has an account lookup field already built in. And you can just say, okay, Salesforce, there's an existing relationship on the contact object that looks up to the accounts. So when you are using this lookup element, just do that same thing, you know, just use that same relationship and just show users account records here. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to create a contact record. It doesn't even mean you're working with a contact record at all in your flow. It just is a way for Salesforce to understand like, oh, there's this existing relationship and I can show account records based on it. And so the same thing applies to when we are going to uh, select a user. So the field API name, or maybe the better way to start would be to start uh, on, um, really any object, but we could just do um, the lead record. And then I'm going to tab out of uh, the flow here, and I'm going to show you down at the very bottom of the lead, there's the created by field. And you can see here that this is actually a lookup relationship uh, to a specific user, in this case, uh, Nick Freights, me. And so what I can do, I'm going to go back to our flow, is I can say, hey, on the lead object, there's a field called created by ID. And so Salesforce, when you run this screen flow, I want you to use that relationship from the lead to the user record and just show the list of people that would be a user. And that doesn't um, mean anything about your lead record. All Salesforce is doing is saying, oh, I understand that relationship. Therefore, I can show you a list of users. And that's really helpful because once um, you pick a user, you can then use it to assign uh, the lead record uh, later on in the flow. And so I hope this wasn't too convoluted of an explanation. Uh, there's a lot of confusion around the lookup element, and it's not super intuitive. 
Um, basically, you're just copying an existing relationship anywhere in Salesforce to show the records that you want. And then once you pick it, you can just use it you know, as you would normally in the flow. This label here is just um, a label for the lookup field inside your flow. And so we'll just call it shipping specialist. And with that long explanation finally done, <laughs> I'm going to press done and we'll press save. And then we can debug this flow and just kind of make sure it's working properly. So let's press debug. We'll press run. We'll once again do Mr. Bob Apples with a phone of 444-777-8888. Bob at bobapples.com. Company Appleseed Enterprises. We'll press next. And you can see that all our new fields are showing up just as we would expect. So I could say, you know, how much does it cost to ship a container to Australia? If you're in Australia and you know that, feel free to let me know. <laughs> um, we'll put in a preferred contact method of a uh, phone. We can pick a follow-up date of next week. And then you can see here that our, our lookup is working. And this gives us the ability to search people. And so when I click on it, uh, just the way any other lookup relationship would work on a typical record, you can see that we have it configured to pull in users. So I can just pick uh, myself, Nick Freights, or I can pick one of the other users that we created earlier in the course. So I can type in the word Tina and Tina Apples will appear here. And this is a really useful component if you know how to use it. And so that's why we spent so much time talking about it. But uh, hopefully this visual representation on the front end helps you understand the back end a little bit better. And again, all we did is just use an existing relationship, in this case, from the lead to the user record. And we took that relationship and just said, hey, lookup component, you can use this one in order to show me the records I want to show to the end user. So we'll just pick Tina Apples. And, you know, that's working great. So let's close out the debug and we'll kind of end the video there. Um, in the next video, there's some more configuration we have to do to kind of get the create leads uh, working. But once we've done that, uh, we should be good to activate our flow and then uh, deploy it to end users.